Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Evolution X GSI ROM based on Android 14 on any Android phone. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First and foremost, you will have to install Android SDK platform tools. So get it from my guide. This is the link and extract them onto your PC. So as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Once you have done this, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to settings menu. Then from settings menu, you have to go to about phone and tap on MIUI version seven times. For all the other phones, it's the build number. So tap on build number seven times, then go to system or in case of Xiaomi additional settings and you should now see developer option. So go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. On Xiaomi Redmi and Poco phone, you might get a risk prompt. So check mark, I'm aware of all the risk and then you have to wait for 10 seconds and then tap on OK. You will now get an RSA key prompt as well. So tap on OK and with this debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. So go to platform to folder address bar type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting an ID. Once you are getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. So if that's well and good, you could refer to my guide and get this job done. On most Android phones, you just have to use the firewall flashing unlock command. Whereas in case of Xiaomi, Poco and Redmi phones, you'll have to use the Mi Unlock tool. I have made a guide on all those Android phones in this guide. So do check out my guide and unlock the bootloader. Once that is done, Let's now move ahead. So now you have to download the latest Evolution X ROM from here. So before that, let me show you one important information. So which GSI ROM should you download? So as you could see, there are a couple of GSI ROM. The major difference are, as you could see, these both are the mini version and these are the non mini version. Moreover, these both are the VNDK Lite. Where are the other two are non VNDK Lite. So whether you should download the VNDK Lite or the non-VNDK Lite, that is the major cause of concern. So we'll first verify the same. As far as the CPU arch architecture is concerned, all are ARM64 and hear about all the Android phones nowadays comes with ARM64 only. So that is not a concern. You only have to check whether your phone is VNDK Lite or non-VNDK Lite. You could go through my entire guide as well. But in short, you just have to install the an app which is known as Treble Info app. So simply install the Treble Info app and from there go to the details section. Under details section you have to check the linker namespace isolation. If it shows that VNDK is not in light mode. So in that case you will have to download the non VNDK ROM which in this case is the first and second ROM. On the other hand if it shows that VNDK is in light mode then your phone supports VNDK. And in that case, you will have to download a VNDK ROM. So again, I'm repeating, install the Treble Info app from Play Store, then launch it and go to the details section and check out this. If it's VNDK is not in light mode, then you will have to download the non light mode. So as you could see the first and second ROM, on the other hand, if it's in the light mode, then download the VNDK version third or fourth. Moreover, the mini version is a stripped down version of the main ROM and it only has a few features. On the other hand, this ROM, the non mini has a lot of features. So the choice is completely yours on which one to download. As of now, I'm using the non VNDK Lite and the major version, not the mini one. So I'll be using this ROM. So make sure to download the ROM according to your choice. Once you have got hold of the GSI ROM, let's now move ahead with the next step. So now the ROM will be in a dot exit format. So let me show you that as well. Just a minute. So as you could see, this is the evolution X ROM in the exit format. You have to now extract it 
for extraction you can use the 7 zip software so install the 7 zip software then right click on the exit format and select show more option now choose 7 zip and choose extract to evolution as you can see the name of the file so select extract to and you will get a folder as you can see over here and inside that folder is the img file gsi img file which in our case is the system.img file so simply copy this gsi rom and paste it inside the platform to folder on your pc so with this we have got the gsi rom so let's move it as well it will take only a few seconds once that is done let's now move ahead with the next step next up you will now have to get hold of the vb meta file for your phone make sure to download the firmware the same firmware which is currently installed onto your phone you will have to verify the same from your phone build number for instance in case of Xiaomi in my case it's the 14060 TLMINXM so the version number and the region should both be same you could always verify the same from the build number so download the same firmware once you have got the firmware you will have to extract the firmware file in case of Xiaomi the firmware is in a dot tgz format let me show you it should be something like this so right click on it select show more option then 7 zip and extract to and after the extraction you will get a dot tar file so you will then again have to extract the tar file as you can see this is the tar file upon right click then once again and select show more option then 7 zip and again extract to and this time you will get the images folder and inside images folder simply copy the vbmeta.img file so let me copy this file so as you could see it's the 14060 TLMINXM so copy the vbmeta file from here and paste it in the platform tool folder on the other hand if you are using a oneplus phone or a realme phone in such phones the firmware is in a payload.bin format so in those, those cases you will have to use a tool which is known as fastboot enhance so extract the firmware and you will get a payload bin file place the payload bin file inside the inside the fastboot enhance folder then launch the fastboot enhance tool go to payload dumple click the browse button and now load the payload bin file inside that you will have to then go to the partition tab select the vb meta file from here so just a minute select and click on extract image choose the location and with this you will get the vb meta file as you could see in the desktop i might have got this is the file so if you have a bin file you could use the fastboot enhance tool i will be linking that tool in the description as well on the other hand the pixel phones have just a zip file so simply extract the zip file and you will get the vbmeta.img file so once you have got the vbmeta file simply transfer the file onto the platform tools folder on your pc so as of now the vbmeta as well as the gsi rom file should both be inside the platform tools folder on your pc once that is done let's now move ahead so now you will have to boot your phone to fastboot mode so launch cmd window and type in adv reboot bootloader and hit enter and with this your phone should now boot into fastboot mode in a matter of few seconds the fastboot screen will vary depending on the phone that you own in my case i am using a poco f4 so i will just get a fastboot keyword that's completely normal not an issue you will now have to verify the fastboot connection so type in fastboot devices and make sure that you are getting a serial id if you are not getting any id then you will have to install fastboot drivers on your pc so i made a separate guide and a video on the same you could refer to my guide and install the drivers once you have installed the drivers right click on the windows icon and choose device manager then expand the android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown as android bootloader interface so this as well as the serial id next to fastboot signifies that your pc is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and you are now good to go ahead so now first and foremost you will have to flash the vbmeta file to disable the verification or verity check so simply copy this command and yes make sure that the vbmeta file is there inside the platform tools folder if that's well and good so simply copy this command and paste the command in the cmd window and hit enter with this the file has been flashed and the verity check has been disabled once that is done let's now move ahead so now you will have to boot your phone to fastboot d mode so simply again copy this command and paste it in the cmd window and hit enter and your phone should now boot into fastboot d mode once again the fastboot d screen might vary depending on the phone that you own 
So let's just wait for a few seconds. And as you could see, my phone is now in the fast boot D mode. Once it's in that mode, you will first and foremost have to remove the product partition from your phone so as to make space for the system partition or in other words to make space for the system.img file which is our GSI file. So first let's remove this partition from our phone to make space. So copy the entire command and paste it in the CMD window and hit enter and with this we have removed the partition. So let's now move ahead and now we could flash the GSI ROM onto our phone. But before that, for the ease of convenience, let's rename the GSI ROM to something shorter. So let's just rename it to GSI for the ease of convenience or you could also rename it to system. So the complete name becomes system.img. So as of now, the GSI name is system.img and is there inside the platform tool folder. Once that's well and good, you could simply copy this command and now paste it in the CMD window. So let's check out the result. So paste it here and hit enter. And the flashing should now begin in a matter of few seconds. So let's just wait for the time frame and check out the result. So as you could see, the flashing has now started. So from here, there's one important point to make. As you could see, we have removed the product A partition. So we have removed the A partition and the flashing is also going in the A partition. If the flashing was going in the B partition, then you will get an error message. So in that case, you will also have to remove the product B partition and then flash the system B partition. So here is what I mean. So let me show you one CMD window. So in my earlier case, I had made a issue. Let me show you the issue what I am talking about. So I first removed the product A partition, but then I flashed the system to the system B partition. Since we haven't removed the product B partition, so there was no space to flash the system file or the GSI file. So if you get an error message such as fails, not enough space to resize partition. In that case, you will have to verify the partition where you are flashing the GSI file and then you have to remove the same product partition. So in my case, the system was being flashed to the B partition. So I then removed the product B partition. And after that, I reflashed the system file. And this time around, I was able to easily flash the system to the B partition. So if you ever get an error message on this line, then simply verify the partition and make sure to remove the, that same partition from your phone. Once you have removed that partition, simply do a flashing once again and then the flashing will get complete without any issues as you could see from here. So anyways, this was the past experience. As of now, let's check out the live flashing. So as of now, the flashing is going on. It has flashed seven files out of 17. So let's just wait for a few more minutes and then we'll be back. So guys, the flashing is just about to get complete. So as you could see, the flashing is complete. The 17 out of 17 files have been flashed. Once that is done, you will now have to do a factory data or a format data. This will remove all the data from your phone. So just use this command and let me type it in and hit enter and it will now erase all the data from your phone. Once that is done, you could now simply reboot your phone to the OS via the fastboot reboot command. So just type in fastboot reboot and hit enter and your phone should now reboot to the newly flashed Evolution X GSI ROM based on Android 14. Let's verify the same. Also do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some additional time frame, which is completely normal and nothing to worry about. From the subsequent time, it will not take that much longer. Moreover, the ROM comes inbuilt with the GF packages. So you don't have to flash GFs. As you could see, we are now in the Evolution X boot animation. The GF package is, I guess, mini or core because we only get a few important GFs, Google apps, which is quite normal. You could install additional apps from the Play Store or from the third party site like APK Mirror as well, if you want. Anyways, as I was saying, the first boot up could take up a few additional seconds. And as of now, I'll skip the initial setup process and take you to the OS and show you the UI. And you'll also have a look at the Evolver section of the ROM, which is the USB of this ROM. Apart from that, I will show you the PHH treble settings as well. So in, if in case something goes wrong in the GSI ROM, you could refer to, to those settings. So regarding that, I have a separate guide. So just a minute, let me first skip the setup process and take you to the OS. I am currently setting up offline. 
and skipping all these stuffs. Let me skip this as well. So let me skip this and with this, as you could see, we are now on the evolution X Chrome based on Android 14. This is the app drawer, this is the QS tiles, and this is the settings menu. The first one is the PHS travel settings that you will find on all the GSI ROMs. And these are the Qualcomm features. If you are facing any audio issues, then make sure to enable the use alternate audio policy, the second toggle. Apart from that, depending on the your phone OEM, you will get some additional feature. If you own a OnePlus and you will get a, a OnePlus feature in case of Xiaomi, there are just two features. Enable double tap to wake and sunlight mode. Then you have some dose features as well. Then there are some miscellaneous features from here that you could try out. There are in fact quite a lot of miscellaneous tweaks, but these are some development level tweaks. So only carry out the, them if you know what you are doing because it could have some adverse impact on your phone as well. So make sure that you know what we, you are doing. And then if you are facing any call issues, in that case, I have uh, the fix is to make a new IMS APN and then get the job done as well. So apart from that, there are a few customization tweaks that you could check out. In case of Evolution x Storm, we already have customization. So we don't require this section. We'll do from the ROM section itself. Then it is the updater app. You could use the PHS Tribble or any system updater app to update the ROM as and when there is a new update. Apart from that, you could see this is the Evolver section that I was talking about. First off are the themes. You get the themes option. And apart from that, there are the headline body font. There are quite a lot of fonts over here. Let me select one of these fonts. Then you have the icon pack. You could choose from many different icon packs. So currently, since I'm offline, you might not be see much changes, but you could see the battery percentage and the time and settings. Then we have the Wi-Fi icon style. You could select from these styles. And likewise, we have icon shape. So let me choose the scroll icon shape and check out the results. So as you could see, it's definitely not good, but still just for the sake. Brightness slider, navigation style, you could choose from here. Currently I'm using the navigation style, so you won't see any button. Apart from theming, we have the status bar tweaks. Then we have a few notification tweaks as well. Next up are the power menu. So advanced reboot is quite important in my case. So you could directly reboot to the recovery or the fast boot mode or you could also restart the system UI as and when required. Then in, apart from the power menu, there are a few gestures. Then we have some lock screen tweaks as well. Then the button tweaks, navigation modes. Then there are some miscellaneous tweaks regarding the gaming space. Unlimited Google Photo Storage, it comes inbuilt with the Google Photo Storage since the Pixel XL is the only phone that supports this. So your phone will now be spoofed to the Pixel XL. And if you connect your phone to your PC, you might see your phone name as Pixel XL, which is completely normal and nothing to worry about. Because you are getting unlimited photo storage at original quality. Then we have the Netflix spoof as well. So if you have rooted your phone and the Netflix then usually the wideband certification gets dropped down to L3. But if you enable this, then the wideband will remain at L1 and you could watch all the DRM content at full HD. Then you could also unlock higher FPS in the games and a few other tweaks are there. So lastly, let me show you the about device section. So this is the Android version as you could see. So guys, on that note, I round off this video. If you have any queries, do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching.